Praise the Lord. You know, the Apostle Paul prayed a prayer over us in Ephesians chapter 1 for us to pray over ourselves and over those around us. And that prayer says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be flooded with light, would be enlightened. In other words, I pray that something on the inside of you is awakened to you, that you can see who you are in Christ. And that you can see what Christ has done for you. Praise the Lord. And what you've been called to do. Praise God. And that you would identify with the power of the Holy Ghost who's resident on the inside of you. Say this today. Say, I'm in Christ. Say, Christ is in me. Say, I've been called for a great purpose. And I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost who lives on the inside of me. Who's the Holy Ghost? He's the power of God. See, I've got the power of God living on the inside of me. Amen. Aren't you glad for that today? Come on, let's just remind ourselves of the great power that's resident on the inside. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my face Pushing back when the darkest weapons fall there's a power on my lips, even death can't defy. When the name of our God is lifted high, there, there is resurrection power. When we sing the name of Jesus, resurrection power. When we raise a mighty sound, come on, let the praise get loud. That empty grave is out. There is resurrection power in His name. There are days I have seen through heartache and loss that have buried my heart beneath the rock. But if it's time this place breaks out, dead things rise up from the ground. I will leave my soul inside an empty grave. Oh, there is resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. Come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave breathe out. There is resurrection power. Resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. Come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave raise out. There is resurrection power in His name. Some dead men come out of that grave. Come out of that grave when we sing Captives, let go of those chains Let go of those chains When we pray Dead man, come out of that grave Come out of that grave when we sing Captives, let go of those chains Let go of those chains when we pray Dead man, come out of that grave Those chains, those chains, when we pray, 
behind me. Come on, say it with an attitude. The grave's behind me. Say, my past is behind me. Woo! Say, the future's bright. Glory to God. So we don't let our praise stay in that tomb that we've left. We lift our praise to God in this place today. In fact, the Bible says to consider Jesus. We're actually instructed to consider Jesus. Why? Because our minds go a lot of other places. Come on, have you ever had your mind go other places? And it says you consider, you bring your mind into, into subjection to think about Jesus. Think about who he is. Think about what he has done for you. And think about who you are in him. So we do that right now. Just lift your hands, Lord Jesus. Right now, all across this room, where we lay aside every other thought, every other reasoning, Lord, every other thought that would try to come to take the place of considering you. And we purpose this day to consider who you are and what you've done and who we are in you this day. We cast our thoughts to you, Lord God. And we cast down any other thought to the authority of Christ in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that crescent tree. His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still
He's a great God. He's an awesome God. Come on, say it. He's a mighty God. We serve a miracle-working God. Aren't you glad for that today? Aren't you glad to know that with God, nothing's impossible? Praise the Lord. How many of you need a miracle? Or how many of you know somebody in need of a miracle? It's good to know a miracle-working God. And we declare today, Father, that the greatness of your power is present in this place, Lord God. For your word says we're two or more gather in your name. You are right there in the midst. Praise the Lord. Where God is, great things happen. And where expectation is, miracles take place. You know, when the, all throughout the word, we see people that needed a miracle, and they would go find where Jesus was. And they knew if they could get to him, they could get their miracle. They would cry out for him, and as he would go down the streets, they would say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the mercy of God would cause miracles to manifest. Praise the Lord. How many of you are believing for miracles, for a miracle-working God to manifest himself in this place today? I don't know about you. I know some people in need of a miracle. I know people watching right now, tuning in. They need a miracle. And we're believing for God to do great and mighty things today. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hearts to him. Let's lift our expectation and our affection and our attention on him. Because when you can get a group of people unified together and all their heart is locked on the same thing, then the power of God can be released. Praise the Lord. Just lift your hands and Father, we just worship you in this place. We recognize that we're in the presence of greatness. We're in the presence of a mighty God, a miracle-working God. And with you, nothing is impossible. So, Lord, we unite together in faith and belief for miracles, miracles in this place today, God. We thank you, Father, for transformations of lives, Lord, restorations of relationships. Father, we thank you for doing what only you can do today, Father. We worship you, God. We think about you. We consider you, Father. And we thank you for your hand moving in this place. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. that again you are here darkness 
Come on, give him a shout of praise in this place today. focus on you today, Lord. You're bigger. You're bigger than any situation that may be challenging me today. You are bigger. Father, we thank you for the greater one lives inside of us now. Say this with me. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me years ago. And I share this often because we have to refocus sometimes. We have to get our eyes off of our circumstances, our situations. That in the natural, they may seem impossible. They may just seem impossible. But how many know that nothing's impossible to God? And the Lord told me, if you get your eyes off of yourself, are you listening? Get your eyes on me. What's impossible will become possible. Amen? Because in God, all things are possible. That's right. He's a good God. Amen. How many can say God has been good to you? He's a miracle worker. How many can say God's been a miracle worker in your life? Hallelujah. Let's give God a big shout of praise in here today. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, let's just take a minute and just praise the Lord with all of our hearts. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, there's nothing impossible for you. Nothing's impossible. You are the way maker. Promise keeper. How many know that God has given us promises? Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Praise God. You know, I was thinking about this scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at your neighbor says, Good to see you in the house of the Lord today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, Yet we have the same spirit of faith. As he who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. How many know you need to give voice to what you believe? I mean, how many know you need to get your believing in line with the word of God? Amen. The Lord said, get the word, my word in your heart and let it come out of your mouth. Amen. So we believe and we speak and we believe the word of God. We believe what God says in his word. Say this with me because this has been my declaration. Say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I will bless the Lord in the good times, in the challenging times. I will bless the Lord at all times and His praise will continually be in my mouth. What are you doing? You're giving voice to, to what you believe. You believe that God is bigger, that God is greater. He is the way maker. Amen. I mean, God's been good to me. He's been good to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's say this together. We will 
We will run our race. We will finish our course. We will keep the faith. I mean, there's going to be challenges, amen? But say this with me, because this is my declaration, man, all the time, continually. I will run my race. I will finish the course. I will keep the faith by fighting the good fight of faith, laying hold of the eternal life, holding fast to a good faith confession. How are you going to fight the good fight of faith? You're going to lay hold of God's truth. Lay, lay hold of the eternal life. His word is eternal life. Amen? And then you hold fast to a good faith confession. Amen? I mean, instantly, man, if you say something out, outside of the will of God or outside of the out of line of the word of God, the Holy Spirit will just, just, just kind of give you a check. You'll say, Lord, forgive me for saying or talking that way. Because, I mean, death and life is in the power of your tongue. And what you're speaking, the Bible says you're going to have the fruit of what you're speaking. So that's why I say you've got to keep yourself in check. Keep your tongue in check. Amen. you got to, like Darren was saying earlier, you got to put a zipper on your lipper. <laughs> Amen. What did you say? you got to, got to, before you trip, zip your lip before you trip. Amen. Praise God. So you got to keep yourself. And listen, this is what you train yourself to do. Because if you're going to walk out the will of God, you got to train yourself. And I've said some things, and the Holy Spirit said, that's not, that's not proper. You don't talk that way. That's not how you talk. One time I said something. I said, Lord, I just, I just, I just can't afford that. And the Lord said, don't you ever say you can't afford that. If that's in my plan for your life, you can. I'll bring it to your life. I'll bring it to you. Amen. Don't ever say you can't afford it because you're talking lack. You're talking doubt. You're talking unbelief. Are you listening to me? So there's certain things like that. The Holy Spirit just gets you right in check. I mean, you'll say certain things. It's almost like a curse word. See, when you train yourself to follow the Word of God, and you train yourself to speak the Word of God, if you speak something that's contrary, instantly you'll know in your heart, that's not the Word of God. That's not the will of God. Lord, forgive me for even saying that. Amen? Praise God. So what are you speaking? What are you declaring? You are your own prophet. You can declare the Word of the Lord out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I will run the race. I will finish the course. I will keep the faith. Hallelujah. Say this with me. With a long life. He shall satisfy me. Hallelujah. Say, I'm healthy. I'm strong. Say, I'm good looking. <laughs> Praise God. Some of y'all need to say that even more. Amen. Say, so you believe it. Amen. Because in, in God's eyes, you're beautiful. Amen. He's beautified and dignified you. You're precious in God's eyes. Amen. Praise God. So we believe and therefore we speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, that every day is beautiful. Every day is beautiful. We thank you, Lord, and Lord, you're so wonderful. You're merciful. You're gracious to each one of us. And Lord, we just dedicate this time to you. Holy Spirit, you're the great leader. You're the great guide. You're the comforter, the strengthener. You're the great standby. You're our counselor. Holy Spirit, we ask you. I ask you to direct our steps. Flood us with God's thoughts. Let us speak the word of the Lord. Let us speak the will of God. Father, we thank you that, Lord God, in this church, in this service today, that, Lord, we'll put a smile on your face. You'll say, well done, well done. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together corporately, to lift our hands and to magnify you, to thank you for your goodness and mercy, to thank you for who you are. You're such a precious, heavenly Father. For you are my God, you are my Father, and I am your child. And you take good care of me. Hallelujah. Let me say that today. God takes good care of you. He is your God. He's your daddy. He's Abba Father. I say this all the time. Praise God. You love Jesus and you love me. You love me as much as you love Jesus. Amen. John 17, 23 says he loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. And I say this because of that. I said, you take good care of Jesus. You took good care of Jesus when he was on this earth. And you take good care of me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're my daddy. Hallelujah. Just give God thanks for being our daddy today. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a good daddy. Matthew, you got a scripture? I was supposed to have you shared it earlier, and I have Kaylee. Where's Kaylee at? Huh? She's catching the heel. That's what Matthew said. Good morning, church. So I was supposed to share in first service, but it was cool because uh, 
during transition time, Pastor was saying some things that like were kind of on uh, on my heart as well. So I just want to like briefly read from Matthew 25. Uh, earlier in the first service, Pastor was talking about being a disciple of Jesus. You know, we've been talking about um, being led by the Holy Spirit, and that's such an important thing. That's the most important thing. So recently we've been talking about being led by the Holy Spirit and walking in love. Yeah. And what a great time to practice those two things. Yep. Then right Amen. now. Amen. So I want to start just real quick in Matthew 25, verse 34. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. So, and then I'll jump down to, um, let's see. Verse 40 says, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Amen. So what's been on my heart lately is, you know, being a disciple of Christ, earlier in Matthew 25, it's talking about kind of distinguishing the sheep from the goats, the disciples, those are who are actively following Christ, those who are kind of walking their own way, doing their own thing. And so what's been on my heart lately is to really be a disciple of Christ. You know, we are his hands and feet. Yes. You know, Jesus is no longer here in the physical. Right. His Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. So we are his hands and his feet. We are Jesus on the earth in the physical because he's seated at the right hand of the Father. So we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And when you're a disciple of Christ, you are seeking to follow his leading. You're right. seeking to walk in his love. So wherever you are in the workplace, you know, there's opportunities all the time. There's lost people everywhere. And we have the answer. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. We have his love. We're seeking to walk in his love. Yeah. So everywhere we go, whether it's the workplace, whether it's the grocery store, there's opportunities all around. Amen. So I'll read one more verse to kind of wrap it up. It's, uh, let's see. It is Matthew 10, 8. It says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. So that's like, that's so cool because Jesus freely gave. Yeah. He freely gave his life. He freely poured out his blood. He was freely beaten, whipped, scourged for us. Yeah. And he's given us that, his, his love, salvation. Freely we've received. We didn't have to do anything. Right. It's not by works. It's by grace. Yeah. And so we've received freely, and he's asking us to give freely. What does that look like? Give of your time. Yeah. You have no idea what just a few minutes with someone in the line at Walmart could do for them. You have no idea how God can use that. Right. We're, we're seeking to be his hands, his feet, in the workplace, in the grocery store, on the road. You know, there's just opportunities all around us each and every day. And so I just wanted to encourage you this morning, just take, take a moment. You know, there's such a bigger picture. We get wrapped up in our own lives. We get wrapped up in our agendas, our daily schedules. You know, come on, we're busy. But take time to really be a disciple of Christ. Be his hands and his feet yes. in the workplace, in, in every facet of life. Yes. Praise God. Love and demonstration. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I think Matthew's got the preach on him, man. <laughs> let him cut him loose here one Sunday and let him preach. Amen. Thank you, Matthew, for sharing that because that's right in line with the word that God's been speaking to this church. We're talking about demonstrating that life of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. We all have opportunities. Right. Amen. If we just open our eyes and kind of come out of our box, and there's many, opportun many opportunities, and to do it to the least of these, you've done it for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. How many want to be disciples, true disciples Amen. of the Father God? Yeah. Amen. It says demonstration, in, that's demonstrations of God's love. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, praise God for that. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for this worship team. We love this worship team. Yeah. Praise God for their faithfulness. It's their faithfulness that we appreciate so much. And every time they come up here, you know, they prepare and they pray. And they just don't just haphazardly put something together. They come together uh, on purpose, you know, to bring in the presence of the Lord, usher in the presence of God. Amen. So we're thankful for that. We appreciate every one of them and for their diligence. Bradley, thank you so much, dear brother. I tell him all the time, I said, man, you're just such a blessing. 
You just come here, brother. Just go with the flow. You just, you just are such a blessing. Yes. Praise yes. God. And thank God for all the ushers, the greeters, and yes. sound people. Oh, the sound people. We appreciate the sound people. Well, lift your Bibles in the air. Praise God. Thank God for all the people that, that are faithful church workers. Amen. Faithful church workers. You know, the things of God, the work of God takes place because we have faithful church workers. Praise God. So thank God for that. Amen. I mean, lift your Bibles in the air. Wiggle them around. Make the devil nervous. How many of you would like to make the devil nervous? Yeah. Amen. Let's just make him mad. Say, so this is my Bible. This is God's word to me. I am what he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. And I can have all that he says I can have. I boldly declare today that my mind is alert. That my heart is receptive. For I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living seed, the word of God. And as I apply his truths to my life, I will never be the same. Look at your neighbor with an attitude and say, never, never, never. Say, I'll tell you what, I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Say this with me. The word that's preached today will find good ground. I'm good ground. And I'll be a doer of that word. That word will produce in my life. Hallelujah. Say this in faith. He brings me out of poverty, into wealth, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and even financially. He brings me out of sickness, into health. He brings me out of a life of defeat. Mm. I was a defeated person. But he brought me out of a life of defeat into a life of victory. Say, a life of victory. Say, victory is mine all the time. Give the Lord a big shout of praise in here today. Hallelujah. Victory all the time. 24-7. How many believe you can have victory all the time? You know, it's what you believe, what you're speaking, what you're declaring. And, and how many know you can have victory 24-7? I didn't know that growing up. I thought I can just have victory when I'm in church on Sunday and everybody's looking at me. Because I'm surrounded with believers. But when I walk out that door, when I get up on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, I can have victory every day. Right. Praise God. Amen. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Amen. Hope means earnest expectation. What are you expecting? So when I get up in the morning, I'm expecting to have a good day. Say, so thank God for that. Amen. So we can have victory every day because we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right. And how many of the Holy Spirit, he'll lead you in triumph. Man, where you're living a life celebrating what Jesus has already obtained for you and I. Jesus got the victory for us. Amen. So the Holy Spirit leads you to a place that's called the faith walk. He'll lead you to the place where you're celebrating, really releasing your faith, living in what Jesus already purchased for you. He says, but thanks be unto God, who in Christ, he always leads us in triumph. Hallelujah. Say, I'm triumphant in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five, an air high five, and you can be seated. We better say an air high five because people might get arrested today. Who knows? You might just get arrested. I'm going to share some things here. We're going to do a, a, a baby dedication. We've got several babies that are going to be uh, parents that are going to just dedicate their baby to the Lord. And so I'm going to take just a few minutes here to share something about parenting, uh, about raising champions for God. Amen. Amen. How many know we need to be encouraged? We need to be taught. We need, to, we need to really know the importance of what it is to, to be a parent or grandparent or step-parent or foster parent. How it's so important to take what you're doing and take that responsibility very seriously and how there's great rewards when you do it God's way. Amen. How many there's great rewards when you do it God's way? Amen. And just because you have a child doesn't mean you're a good parent. Right. You're not going to be instantly good parents. You're going to be a good parent. And I'm talking about a good parent is a godly parent. Yeah. And you're going to be a godly parent... Because you do things on purpose with a purpose. Amen? You're not just accidentally going to have godly children. It's going to be because you did things on purpose with a purpose and you began to do it God's way. Amen. amen. Say amen, somebody. And see, one of the roles as a pastor is to teach you as I'm learning, as I'm growing, because I'm still learning to be the best parent I could be. And I take that role very, very seriously in my life. Amen. I don't take it. It's not anything casual in my life. I take it as one of my highest priorities in life Amen. is to be the very best parent I could be. Amen. And what is that? Directing my children to the will of God for their life. Introducing them to Jesus Christ and man, praying and letting them, letting them come to know him as their Lord and Savior. 
and, and then helping to steer them, to direct them in the path that God has ordained for them to walk in. Amen. So as a parent, I'm praying and I'm seeking God and I'm earnest before God that God would give me skillful and godly wisdom so that I could be the right example and model Christ and, and lead my children into the destiny that God has for them. Amen. amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And when you talk about parents, you see, I get very passionate about this because I see so many people, they don't understand what it is to be a godly parent. And so they leave the world to raise their children and you have a world that's gone crazy. Are you listening? I heard one person say this one time, said, well, I did all I can do, and I just gave them back to God. No, God gave them to you. Amen? He gave them to you. And if you listen to the Holy Spirit, you could become the best godly example they ever had. Amen? And you could watch their lives grow and develop, and you'll be, it's just such a reward. The Bible says your children are a reward from God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So when I'm sharing this today, listen, you can start wherever you're at. Wherever you're at. You know, and nobody's condemning anybody because we don't know what we don't know. Amen? And so we have to be challenged or encouraged or stirred or, you know, just uh, directed in certain ways. And that's what I want to do, man. I want to learn from people. Joe McGee is one of the great examples of being a, a godly parent and watching how he just raised his daughters, his children, and his son, and watching the example. Billy Joe Daughtering, my pastor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, had all of his children. I mean, he raised them up. And I'm telling you what, it takes courage. It takes compassion. It takes hearing from the Holy Ghost to raise your children in this environment. Are you listening? But doing it on purpose, with a purpose, and all of his children are serving God. All of his children are doing wonderful. They're in ministry today. Well, that was a role model to me. And he wrote a book on raising champions for God. Well, my, my title today, and part of what I got was from the book that he wrote, he was a great example, one of the greatest pastors I ever met in my life, and a great role model. And so when I saw him and saw his life, it inspired me so much. It just stirred me so much. And then when I got married and, of course, had children, I said, Lord, I want, to be a, I want to be a father like he was a father. And I'm talking about to his natural kids and also to his spiritual kids. Amen? Amen. How many know there is an agenda from the enemy to rip you off? There's an agenda against our families, and it's happened for decades. A deliberate and calculated attack against our children, against families, against God in this nation. It is called an anti-Christ spirit. Are you listening? 1 John chapter 4, verse 3 says, The Antichrist spirit is here on this earth right now. Antichrist means against Jesus, against the anointing of God, against the power of God. Amen? Amen. And the devil's pulling out all the stops and possessing people with a spirit that hates anything to do with God. The cross, the word of God. The Christian military chaplains, the school system, the churches, religious freedoms. How many see that displayed right now? There is a great spiritual attack against God, against the church. Are you listening? Against anything or anyone that has anything to do with God. Man is trying to kick God, trying to secularize this world. They're trying to kick God out of everything. But how many of the church is what's holding all this together? Amen? So this church, so the world doesn't go to, to hell, is what, about, what you say. But we got the church. Say the church. the church. We are Satan's greatest threat. Say greatest threat. Christians are the only reason that Satan hasn't destroyed this country. We are his biggest hindrance. You got to realize that. You say, what's Jesus doing in this hour? The Bible says, Jesus says, I'm going to build my church. Amen. He's building. You and I, we're his church. He says, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. He's building his church. Amen. Whoo, he's the commander in chief. And we're his body. Amen. Amen. We're in the army of the Lord. Amen. So he directs us. He leads us. So what is he doing this hour? He's building a great church that could pray, that could prophesy, that could be the hands, the feet, the mouthpiece of Jesus on this earth to point people in the right direction. I mean, there is a confused world out there. Amen. And Satan, man, he's pulled out all the stops. But praise God. What the devil meant for evil, God is turning it around. Amen. There's, you may not see it on the news, but there's great revival taking place all around this country right now. Amen. The same cities where they're burning them down is the same cities where God has raised up some mighty men and women of God. They're getting them saved, and they're baptizing them right on the street. Amen. I mean, you're not seeing that on the news. But I'm telling you, there's some great things taking place. There is a spiritual awakening taking place all around this nation. 
Amen. So if you're just watching news, you're going to be inundated with negative stuff. But I got news for you. There are great things taking place. People are coming to know Jesus Christ. God is changing their life. He's rescuing them from the mess that they're in. Say, thank God for his mercy. Amen. So we're Satan's greatest threat. You got to realize that. You are his greatest threat as the church, as a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ. Secular humanist with atheistic and evolutionary values and communists all know the way to change the nation is to get to the kids. Amen. Communist leaders have said point blank, the goal of communism is to get control of our schools. So they started this years ago. I mean, you got progressive liberals in our schools, professors, and when kids come out, I told one person said this: if you want to ruin your kids, send them to college. Are you listening? Because you got progressive liberals that are that are that are influenced by an antichrist spirit. By the time your kid comes out of school, they don't even know what they believe. They're kind of like uh, questioning even if there is a God. I'm talking about Christians going to school. You can go to these schools, and when you come out, man, you're totally messed up. Why are you listening to me? But we're praying that God raise up Christian professors. We can take back our schools. Amen? Amen. Say, so thank God for that. Amen. Amen. So we have, we have an agenda that comes from the devil, and he's doing everything he can to stop the church. But we're talking about today raising godly children, raising champions for God. We know there's an agenda, but thank God for his help, for the Holy Ghost. We can be a godly parent to raise up godly champions in this hour. Amen? It starts with you knowing that God has a great purpose for your children, that he will grace you as a parent with wisdom and give you clear vision to see them walking in his plan and purpose. Amen. I mean, you've got to see your, your kids with a different set of eyes. I mean, I mean, I'm very, very conscientious of that every day, that my children have a purpose. They've got a destiny that must be fulfilled in this hour. Amen. So I'm always looking. I'm always praying. I'm always seeking God and asking God. It takes what we call, what the word calls, skillful and godly wisdom. Amen. He'll teach you when to pray. He'll teach you when to say certain things. He'll teach you how to model Christ in a way where it influences them. And you will be their hero in this life. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Now, like I said, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm trying to be the very best godly example in my children's lives. Amen. Say, I want to raise champions for God. So we ask him, we ask God for wisdom as we train up our champion children to walk in the plan that God has for them. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13, it says this, and I like it in the Amplified Classic translation. It says, happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man who finds skillful and godly wisdom and the man who gets understanding and in parentheses, it says, drawing it forth from God's word and life's experiences. Amen? Through my experiences of walking with God and uh, getting into maybe some messes. I've gotten into some messes in life. But when I turn to God, God gives me wisdom that gets me out of those messes. I don't know about you, but I want to follow somebody that's been through something. Amen? And they learn how to get out of it. They learn how to trust God. I mean, they got a, the arm of the Lord on, but man, there's some dings, there's some dents, and man, I tell you, it's not all shiny and bright. They've been through some things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so as we, listen, so our experiences with God, our walk with God, we can gain skillful and godly wisdom, not only from the Word of God, but through life's experiences. So life's experiences could be positive. Amen. It could start out negative, but God could turn it around where you can have wisdom in that situation. So I tell my daughter, I tell Amber, I tell Bubby, I tell Angelina, I'm older than you. I've been there. I told Amber, look, you're, you're just a young girl, 30. I'm twice the age you are. You're not all that smart. I've got more experiences in life than you've ever had, and I can help you if you let me help you. Not that I know it all. Because I don't, definitely don't know it all. But I've been through some things, and if you let me, I can help you so you can avoid some of the same things I went through. Amen. 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 Thank God for life's experiences. Amen. So we gain the skill from godly wisdom. I love that scripture in the Amplified. Through the word of God and through life's experiences. Say, so thank God for God being with us when we're going through challenges. Amen. Amen. 
A champion. Give me, I'm going to give you the definition of champion. A champion for God is someone who is an overcomer for God. He's living according to God's standards, and he's pursuing God. Amen? How I many know you can be a champion as a parent, but also your children can learn to be a champion in God, to stand strong in spite of what's going on in the natural? Amen. You inundate them so much with God's word, with God's love, with God's wisdom, God's direction, in spite of what they're challenged with, they don't have to fall. Amen? They don't have to fall to what's going on around them. They can stand strong. Don't even settle for that. Don't settle for them falling. Don't settle for them, well, that's just a way. No! You are a godly child. You are a godly parent that can pray and intercede on your children's behalf. You can have the wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. When I think about skillful and godly wisdom, every one of my children are different. So I've got to have skillful and godly wisdom for that individual child. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And I'm telling you, the way we raised Amber and the things, the decisions we made, we may do some things different with Bubby. Yeah. And then with Angelique. They're all three different. Right. So it takes skillful and godly wisdom. Amen. Amen. amen? Not to keep seeing it the same way you see it all the time, but God can change it around where you'll see things with a different perspective. You may have to approach this one with a different way than you did this one. Say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. The greatest thing you can ever learn. As a parent, a person that endeavors to raise your children, to know God, to walk with God, is to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's inside of the great teacher. He's the great guide. He lives inside of us, and he's there to assist us, to help us in accomplishing one of the greatest things, purposes in our life, and that's to raise champions for God. Amen? So thank God for that. So we teach our children, we teach them to revere God and to revere God's Word. We teach them to cherish God, to cherish His Word. We teach them to pray, to commune with God. We teach them how to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? It is so wonderful, man. Would you just begin to teach your children how to pray, how to hear the voice of God, how to be led by the Spirit of God? That's one of the roles of a parent, of a grandparent, of a step-parent, a foster parent. We all have that responsibility and opportunity that God has given to us. See it as a great, great opportunity. Say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen? So we teach them that God has a plan for their individual life. Now, they can be all that God destined for them to be. Amen? Some people say, and I mean, in the natural, they'll try to encourage their kids, you can be all that you want to be. No, I say it from a Christian perspective. You can be all that God wants you to be. You can be everything that God wants you to be. It's important to find out what God has for you and be all that God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 22, 6 says, and I'm going to give you three different translations in the Amplified Classic Version. It says, train up a child in the way he should go or she should go and in keeping with his individual gift or bent and when he is old he will not depart from it amen so with a trained child the analogy that you would use there would be like training up a, a rose plant or a plant around around a, a trellis is what you call it and so you train it around so even when the trellis is removed it's still trained to go in that same direction Amen? So it takes time, and over a period of time, you could train that plant. You could shape that plant. Amen? And you could shape that plant in a way that even when that trellis is removed, that plant is still shaped that way. That's what it's talking about. That's the analogy you want to use. So we train our kids. We train our kids. We work with our kids. We train them. So even when we're removed or we go home to be with the Lord, they know in their heart, they know in their spirit, they have been trained to do things a certain way. Thank God. Thank God for that. Amen. Man, I got, I, got, I got, you know, I'm 60. Praise God. I know I look 30, but I'm 60. And every day is beautiful. Praise God. <laughs> and I got, you know, and, and, and man, I pray that, that for the rest of my life, you know, that I can model Christ. And, and uh, you know, I love the church. I love the church family. I love my spiritual children you know and I don't use that term a lot because some people misuse that I believe but I love the spiritual children I love the little ones that I've seen grow up and they grow up and now they're married and they're having children yeah. that's one of the rewards of being in a, in a position for 20 years we've been here for 20 years we've seen kids grow up we've seen them have kids and that's like praise God yeah. what a reward Amen. Amen. but I love my, my, my biological children and here's what I feel, that if I'm a failure in their life, then I'm a failure. Are you listening? 
I love the church and I love you and I'm telling you I put my heart into doing what I'm doing and I do it on purpose with a purpose amen but I love my children I love my wife I love my family amen and my greatest responsibility in life I believe my number one responsibility is to model Christ to them in a way where they can carry on the work of the Lord fulfilling the purpose of God in their life I take it very serious amen say thank God for the Holy Ghost Amen. Here's what it says in the Amplified Translation. You know, you got the Amplified Classic, then you got the Amplified. Here's what it says in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go, teaching them to seek God's wisdom and will for their abilities and talents. And, when, and even when he gets old, he will not depart from it. Now listen, we've taken the Scripture growing up in church they said, well, I'm sowing into my kid's life. You know, they're going to go out and they're going to sow their wild oats. But you know, the Bible says that even when they get old, they're not going to depart. You know, no, the word says that even when they get old, they will not depart. In other words, your children do not have to leave God. Yes. They don't have to walk out of the will of God, the plan of God. Amen. I refuse to accept the way the world or even the way the church used to teach me that. No, I'm going to teach my kids and I'm not expecting them to go wayward. I'm expecting them to stick with it. Amen. They're going to stick with it. Yes. As long as I'm around, they're going to stick with it, man. Yes. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Yes. Oh, thank God for the opportunity we have. I love my children. I love this church. I love the family of God. Amen? Amen. Here's what it says. So even when they get old, they will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6 in the Passion Translation says it this way. And we're going to talk about baby dedication. Dedicate your children to God. Isn't this beautiful? Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go and the values they learn from you will be with them for life. Isn't that beautiful? So we're having a baby dedication. Dedicating our children, in other words, bringing them to the house of the Lord, being prayed over, dedicating them to the Lord. Saying, God, thank you for blessing me with this wonderful gift, and I'm going to choose right now to just dedicate them to you. Amen? With purpose in our heart, man, to dedicate them. Let me read that scripture. I love this scripture. Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go, and the values they learn from you will be with them for life. Praise God. So what you're imparting to them, the values, they're going to be, it's going to be with your children for life. So we teach them. We teach them that God has a plan for them, for their individual life, and they could be all that God destined for them to be. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 15 says this, part A in the AMP translation. It says, And did not God make you and your wife one flesh? Did not one, did not one make you and preserve your spirit alive? And why did God make you two one? Because he sought a godly offspring from your union. I mean, God, has, he's never deviated from that. He's still seeking for godly offspring. Amen. So he brings people together, you know, and he wants a godly offspring. You say, well, I'm not with my husband or my wife. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a single parent. God will still give you the grace so you can raise up your children and you will have godly offspring. Amen. 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 Don't ever let the devil lie to you and say, you know, I just, I can't do it on my own. You're not on your own. You got the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you and he'll teach you and give you such a love and show you the opportunity you have to raise up a godly offspring. Amen. Say, thank God for that. I can raise up a godly offspring. I mean, the blessings are connected to raising godly children. In other words, God takes this very seriously. When we started this church, the Lord said, if you take care of my children, I'll take care of you. That's what he said to me. If you take care of my children, and God sees all these children out here, and they may be in a situation where they feel like they're orphaned, or where's their parents, or where's their daddy, where's their, you know. And so God said, if you take care of my children, I'll take care of you. And when God spoke that to me, I said, Lord, I had a pastor come to me one day, and he says, we don't want the children at our church because they don't bring any money in. He literally said that to me. And I was like, Righteous indignation rose up. I want to slap him in the next week. But the love of God, he must have really loved that boy because I had mercy on him. Amen. <laughs> but he did. He said it. He said, we don't want the children. 
In other words, he was focused more on teaching the adults. He wasn't concerned about the children. I said, well, send me all your children. All the children that come, please direct them to our church. Because we're going to put great emphasis on our youth and on our children. Yes. And we've endeavored to do that. Amen? Amen. And God told me, he said, if you'll take care of my children, I'll take care of you. Yes. So there are great benefits, Amen. great blessings that come from God. When you focus on children, your children, your grandchildren, your stepchildren, your foster children, and children that are in this town, this community, when you begin to really take interest in the children, God will take care of you. Amen. Amen. I had a person come to me, and some of y'all know this. They came to me in 2004 when we had been here. We started in 2000. 2004, can I have a meeting with you? I had a meeting with them. And as we were leaving the Apple House down here on the road, we were leaving the Apple House. We walked outside, and uh, we had breakfast, kind of a brunch. We walked outside, and a person gave me a, an envelope. Well, I'm not one of those preachers to just stick the envelope in the pocket and just go on. I'm like, I'm going to open it up right there in front of you. I don't know what's in the envelope. It could be, God bless you. Thank you, or whatever. But I took the envelope and I opened up right in front of him and I'm like, I pulled it, there's a check in there. And I pulled a check and I went, whoo, Jesus, $100,000. I put it back down. I said, thank you so much. Here's what he said to me though. I never will forget it. He said, we've been watching your ministry and we like what you're doing with the children. That's the exact words he said. We like what you're doing with the children. We want to invest in that ministry. We can, here's what he said. We can invest in real estate. But we see this as vital, important. We want to invest in your ministry because we like what you're doing with the children. Well, when I looked up the envelope and I went, whoo, Jesus, my legs started shaking. I mean, then I put it back down and I said, I'm all excited. I'm going like, there was a lot of zeros on that check. I had never seen that many zeros. So I pick it back up. I open it back up and it was one with six zeros, one million dollars. And I went, whoo, Jesus. Now I stuck it back. I could not talk for three days. I could not walk for three days. I was sitting in a chair, and I was sitting there going, Lord, Jesus. And Elvie come home, and she said, what's up? What's going on? I said, I was pointing at the counter, you know. She said, you all right? I'm like in the midst of getting ready to cry or faint or do something. I'm like, my legs are rubber. And I'm like, I can't talk. And for three days, I sit there in that chair. I'm going like, Jesus. You're up to something big. Jesus, don't let me blow this. Don't let me miss you in this. Oh, Jesus, you're up to something. So after three days, I could finally get up and walk. I said, Lord, Jesus. And they said, what would you do if you had a million dollars? We bought the largest bar in town. <laughs> fraternal, fraternal order of Eagles building, amen. This was the bingo hall downstairs with the bar. It was the largest bar in town, amen? And we renovated it, praise God, and God paid for all that. Praise God, he's bigger than a chicken dinner, amen? <laughs> he's bigger than a chicken dinner. I got that from Pastor Decker when I was going to, praise God. So what it, see, God's blessings are attached to you looking out for the children. If you'll take care of the children, God will take care of you, amen? And so I look at this as very important in the eyes of God. And if I want to walk in God's best and in his blessings, I need to take care of the children. Yes. Amen. Not only my biological children, but other children. I got a lot of kids right here. Amen. And I love them all. Amen. And I just like to spoil them all. We got a whole box of candy up here. I give them candy when they come see me. Just, ah, my dogs love me. They love me. Oh, they love me because I give them treats every day. Treats all the time. Just treats. Amen. Jesus, he had kids that loved him. The kids, listen, Jesus was fun to be around. He wasn't all stuffed up. No, trying to be. No, Jesus was a joy to be around. Kids love Jesus. How many know? You know, you want your kids to love you. You need to be a joyful one. Amen. You need to have fun with your kids. Amen. I mean, they'll keep you young, man. I got one that's fourteen years old. Keeps me young. Amen. And I'm waiting for Amber and Brett to have their little ones, and I'll have a little grandchild walking around. <laughs> <laughs> and this morning <laughs> they don't been married three weeks and this morning I said well I had a talk with my son-in-law this last night I'm like that's kind of weird I never said that before <laughs> getting used to it amen but uh, praise God we love, the ch say, we love the children amen here's what God says to Abraham Abram here's what he says in Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 
He says, I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Look what he says here. Then I will do Abraham, do for Abraham all that I have promised. Amen. Amen. I mean, there was blessings attached to Abraham's life. In other words, there were some promises that God made to Abraham that could only take place because he chose to do it God's way. Amen. Chose to raise his kids to know God. Amen? This is so vitally important for you to understand. Don't take your position lightly. Understand that you can do this right. Amen? You can be a godly parent. You've got the Holy Spirit inside of you that will help you. And you'll be the best example and the best role model. And if you miss it, because we're not perfect. And if you miss it, you know how to teach them how to say, I'm sorry. I totally blew it. I've gotten really good at that lately. Amen. <laughs> say amen, somebody. Amen. That's just as important. Amen. Being humble enough to say, I'm sorry. I should not have said it that way or should not have done it or should not have acted that way. I'm sorry. How I many of that's teaching your kids that it's okay to say, I'm sorry. Amen? Amen. You're repenting for it. So being a mom and a dad is a high calling and not something to take lightly. It is a holy assignment, a divine mission, and an awesome responsibility. It's called and it's calling which the future of this nation and even the world will be impacted. Because you did a job as a parent raising your champions for God. Amen? The future success. Now listen to this. Because I, I was reading something that the lady, Sergeant Ann Dorn, you know her husband was Captain Ann Dorn from St. Louis, and he got shot outside of a pawn shop. A pawn shop. He gets murdered, and they're videoing this captain who had been 37 years or 40-some years on the force, and many other people slaughtered and killed and all that kind of crap. That's the work of the enemy. That's the yes, devil. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And this is videoed and her grandson's watching it real life. Seeing their granddaddy taking his last breath, gasping for breath on a sidewalk. And these, and these devil-inspired people walking past him had just shot them in, walking past him, taking TVs out of the place, taking stuff out of the place. How I many of that is that is devil inspired? And here's what she said. She spoke at the RNC convention, and, and, and I'm telling you, they had most godly convention, godly centered convention I've ever seen. I was so thankful to the Lord that they were mentioning Jesus Christ over and over and over and over and over and over, talking about prayer. Talking, I, mean, I mean, it was so beautiful to see that. And here's what she said. She said, we're experiencing a nightmare in our cities. And she said this, how do we get to this point where so many young people are callous and indifferent towards human life? She said, this isn't a video game where you commit mayhem and hit reset and bring all the characters back to life. She said, this is for real. My husband will never come back. But when she made a statement, what has happened to us? This is a nightmare. She said the young children, well, it's not only the young children, it's parents, it's other people, it's older people. She said they're so callous and indifferent. Well, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with because they didn't have God. She said, how do we get here? Because the church failed, the parents failed, because people didn't take their responsibility seriously. They pushed God out of everything, secularized even their own life, and so they pushed God out of everything, and look at the wisdom of man. Oh, it's horrible. So how do we get here? Because there was a breakdown. There was a breakdown in making God a pri number one priority in your life. Making going to church and being under the word of God is a number one priority in your life. Amen. How do we get here? Because we're not taking our walk with God seriously. And it was prophesied over this church, and I know I get animated. My kids laugh at me. I get so animated. They said, Dad, the faces that you make and all the expressions. I said, I know, I can't help it. I'm just, I'm just in it, man. I'm just in it. <laughs> but I do get animated. I forgot what I was going to say right there. Praise God. Here's what was prophesied over the church. Said your casualness 
This was God speaking. But divine inspiration. He says, your casualness as a Christian is the reason why you'll have casualties. It's an open door to tragedies that God never intended for you to go through. Your casualness as a Christian is an open door to calamities and tragedies that God never intended for you to go through. And when he prophesied that standing right here, Lord, that hit me, that God knows that hit me so hard. In other words, you don't take your walk with God casual. You take what you're doing, you got a span of time in this life where you can walk with, you can walk with God. You can talk with God. You can hear from God. And you can point people in the right direction. You can have an impact in people's lives. So it isn't something casual for me. I wouldn't even be pastoring the church if it was casual for me. I didn't come here to be casual. I come here to be 100%. Amen? But your casualness. When he spoke that, I said, Lord, forgive me for being so casual in certain areas of my life. So I mean, that will kind of just yanked the slack clean out of you. Because we're blaming God and God's saying, where were you? We're saying, God, where were you? And God says, where were you? Because we got casual, we disconnected from listening to the voice of God and now these things are happening. God, where were you? He says, where were you? I was wanting to speak to you, direct you, give you wisdom. A lot of things happen and God gets the blame. When we need to take and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. Help me. Help me take this seriously. Grace me. Thank you for your grace. I can walk this out very seriously. It's a serious walk with the Lord. Amen? Oh, man, I, I feel this so strong. Amen? So Abraham's blessings were connected to him being obedient to the Lord. As a mom and dad, we have a high calling on our life. And this nation will be impacted because you raised up godly children. Amen? That can continue on the work of the Lord. The future success of this nation depends greatly on how our children are raised, their beliefs, their morals, their standards, their relationship with Father God stem greatly from the environment that they're reared in. Amen? Let me read that again. The future success of this nation depends greatly on how our children are raised. They won't be raised to have to be indifferent, to be callous. Indifferent means no sympathy and not even concerned of what I do, how it affects somebody. That's indifferent. Are you listening? But no, they'll grow up and they'll be raised up to look at life and to value life. Amen. Amen. To look at individuals and to love people. Amen. You can raise your children in a way where this whole nation is impacted positively because godliness in people's lives, your children's lives. Amen. So the future success of this nation depends greatly on how our children are raised, their beliefs, their morals, their standards, their relationship with Father God stem greatly from the environment that they're reared in. God has set the family as a supreme institution for the foundation of society and of the church. Amen. The family is also called, uh, the family is also called God's instrument for execution of his plan throughout history in the last days. That was a quote from Billy Joe, Pastor Billy Joe Daugherty. No wonder. You look at the way the Antichrist spirit. No wonder the sacred institution of marriage between man and woman are under great spiritual attack. No wonder families are under attack. Satan has an agenda. It's spiritual. Amen? How many of there is a spiritual attack against you and against your children? So we need to listen to the voice of God. We need to be deliberate and be skillful in training our children to be ch champions for Christ. Amen? We need to be legacy-minded. We need to be also eternity conscious. Where will they spend eternity? Where will your children, your grandchildren, your stepchildren, where will they spend eternity? But see, you could be so locked in and just ignore or just kind of just dismiss the opportunity and responsibility of being a parent and your kids can die and go to hell. I see this all the time. I see this all the time. Parents just let the world raise their children like they're going to make their own choices. No, you can model Christ where they'll make the right choices. 
I'm so passionate on this. My goodness. All around us, people are just dying and going to hell. And parents are like, well, that's just the way it is. No, that's not the way it has to be. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I already get some amens on that because I'm telling you, we ought to be eternity conscious in our life. We ought to be doing things on purpose with a purpose. A godly son, a godly daughter is not by accident. It's the results of a parent who pours time and effort into their lives. Amen? You're not going to accidentally have a godly offspring. It's going to be because you make deliberate actions. You take deliberate actions in modeling Christ and raising them properly. Amen? Your goal is to raise a generation of world changers. So that we don't want to miss out on God's high calling. I so commend you for being in church on the front row. I so commend you bringing your daughter. I commend you for bringing your two daughters. Missy, I thank you. I thank you for doing that. I commend you for doing that. I commend every one of you parents that bring your, you bring your children to, to church and you're endeavoring to walk this life out to where you can model Christ. I commend you on that. That's, that's wonderful, powerful. And the Holy Spirit's with you to help you and strengthen you and give you the wisdom and the courage it is. It takes courage to be a godly parent. Because in spite of what everybody else is doing, you say, no, my kids aren't going to do that. No, my kids aren't going to be connected with that. It takes courage. It takes the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? So it's not by accident. It's a deliberate act on your part. So our goal is to raise up a generation that know God, that walk with God, that hear the voice of God, that know how to pray, that know how to be used by God. So we don't want to miss out on the highest calling in life. And guess what? You are their parent. Until the day they draw their last breath. So we don't wash our hands of them and focus only on our, our, our grandchildren. Some people, they miss out on their own children and focus on the grandchildren. I'm calling for you to step up. I'm encouraging you for, to wake up. Amen. And say, my children. Now, you may not have a good relationship with your children. Pray that God heals them, brings restoration and healing to your relationship. You pursue that with all of your heart. You pursue that relationship because you see that as important and God wants you to pursue that and bring healing and restoration to your family. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm talking to pastors too. I talked to a pastor the other day. Brother, you need to work on your family, brother. Your own family. Your children, man, they're counting on you. And he's missed them. Got his focus on the whole church and his, whole, his children don't even know him. I'm passionate about this because I've seen parents, they don't know what it is to be a parent and they leave, the, they leave it up to the world and to the devil to raise their kids. And the kids are dying going to hell and they're out there causing mayhem. And doing all, I loved it when that lady come out there. She saw on TV her son out there protesting. She comes out there and grabs him, takes that thing off his head, says, boy, you get back to your house. She spanked him all the way back to his house. I didn't raise, she said, she was a single mother. I didn't raise you this way. You know better. Spanked him all the way back to his house. And I went, praise God. It takes courage, man, to speak the word of the Lord in this hour. Amen? Amen. Say, thank God for the opportunity to be a godly parent and to raise godly children. Amen? Amen. So we need to do what we do deliberately and on purpose, training up our children. We can have godly children, godly kids that can know God and walk with God. Amen. Amen. We're going to be their parent till the day they die. I tell my daughter, she, I said, my kids, I said, you're blessed to have me as your daddy. And guess what? I'm your daddy until I draw my last breath. Amen. Amen. You're just blessed to have me as your daddy. They may not know it, may not feel like it. But guess what? I have great interest in seeing them fulfill the purpose of God. Amen. And I, I tell my daughter, Amber, I said, Amber, nobody in this whole world has prayed as much for you as I prayed. I love you. I, tell, I love you more than anybody in this world could ever love you. Amen. I have great interest in seeing you fulfill God's purpose and marry the right person. You ain't going to marry no knucklehead. I <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a preacher too. And if you lay a hand on my daughter, I'll kill you. <laughs> Mark Hagan said, he said, I might go to jail, but you're going to hell. And I said, I wouldn't joke about that, brother. That's not good. Amen? <laughs> Say, praise God. 
we have the Holy Ghost, and we could do it right. Amen? Amen. So it takes wisdom, it takes the grace of God to be a godly parent. Amen? We as parents, we need to be godly examples in front of our children. We need to model Christ. We need to have godly convictions that are shaped by the Word of God. This is what shapes my philosophies. Your philosophies is the way you view things, the way you feel about things. This will shape your morals, your values. Amen? Not the world. The world does not shape my view. Amen? Man, I don't go by what the, whatever the culture is doing. You just do the opposite. You're probably doing God's will. Say amen, somebody. Man, I feel a great anointing on this teaching today. And man, somebody's getting a hold of it and somebody's saying, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this the right way. So we need to be godly examples in front of our children. We need to have godly convictions that are shaped by the word of God. We need, as parents, we need these godly convictions to be a spiritual and moral compass that point our children in the right direction. I mean, you cannot sit idly by thinking that the government, the schools, society, or even the church can do the job that God's ordained for you to do. I can preach the word of God, but when they go home, you need to enforce what God is saying. Amen? Amen? So you can't just sit idly by. So we teach our children at church. We teach them at church and at school, at a Christian school like this. We teach them, but it has to be reinforced in a godly environment by godly parents. Your children need a hero in their life. Someone that rose to the occasion and assumed a position as a champion raiser. I told Bubby the other day, I said, I'm your daddy, but I want to be your best friend. But I can't be a friend like you're just your friends. I'm your daddy, but I want to be your best friend. Amen? I mean, you can be their daddy, pointing in the right direction, and develop a relationship where you are their hero. And you're their best friend. Amen? Thank God for that. So it's called, we're, called, we're talking about living this 365 days a year, 24-7. Will you model Christ in front of your children? Do I do think, everything right? No. I told you that. I repent. I'm quick to repent. So your children, they need to see how a child of God, will, they need to be taught how to deal with conflict. How do you deal with conflict? They need to see how a child of God would deal with authority. Amen. You're going to have some bad apples. You'll have bad police officers, bad cops. You'll have bad preachers. You'll have bad in everything. But you don't just take and, and with a broad brush, just, just, just brush them all the same way. Amen? In other words, just because you've got a few bad cops don't mean all of them are bad. Amen. Amen. You've got a society that don't have no, no, they have no respect for authority. They've been taught and trained in now through TV. They've been taught to defund the police. Def- That's the stupidest thing you ever heard in your life. Amen. They're putting their life on the line for you. Who do you call when you get in trouble? God and then the police. <laughs> Amen. So they need to be taught how to honor and how to respect. How to honor and respect the flag. Amen. How to honor and respect one another. Amen. How to honor and respect authority. Amen. How to honor and respect their teachers. They need to be shown a godly, how godly husband and wife, how they act towards each other. They need to hear you say, I'm sorry. We ought to model humility and say, I don't know everything. They need to see integrity, how you do business with others, and how you steward the money that comes into your hands. Say integrity. integrity. God said, let integrity guide you. In other words, how you deal with money, you're going to shape their morals and their values on how they do with money. Amen. Amen. I've been, I was in business 20 years, and there was very few people that were people of integrity. We all appreciate integrity. We all appreciate honesty. But I'm telling you, there's very few people that walk in integrity today. Ripping off everybody. Ripping off. I mean, I get mad when somebody gives me a price to do something around the church. I said, no, you're not ripping off the church. I'm not letting you do that to the church. It's called integrity. Amen. We all love integrity, but we ought to be modeling integrity. We ought to be people of integrity. Amen. amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. How we do business with others, how we steward the money that comes in our hands. You need to see. They need to see that you're diligent. You're a faithful worker. You're not an average worker, but an extraordinary worker. You're detail-minded. You're punctual. We ought to be the very best example in all areas of our life. Woo! I tell people, you ought to excel when nobody else is excelling. You're not to be mediocre. We don't settle for mediocre. 
We're not going to be just average. We're going to be above average because we got the Holy Ghost living inside of us. We could be far above, man. We could be up here and other people just operating. Well, so they just want a job. They just want to get a check. But you're there to make that person money. You're there to be the very best employee. You're there to encourage them and be the very best. Say amen, somebody. We're to live up here because we got Christ living inside of us. So we're to model this in every area of our life. Amen. They ought to see you praying and praising and worshiping God. They need to see this in your life. That's why I want my kids to sit on the front row. I want, to, I want them to see me worshiping God. I want them to see me praising God. I want them to see me praying in the Holy Ghost. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Let me wrap this up. So we need to see, they need to see you witnessing your faith to others. They need to see you being a soul winner. They need to see you reaching out to the hurting, reaching out to the unfortunate. Amen. They need to see you serving others, reaching out to others that are in need, never looking down on others unless you're looking down to give a helping hand to lift them up. Amen. Amen. They need to see you full of, full of self. And let me see. Then they could be full of, Compassion and not full of self. <laughs> full of self. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. So listen, your likes and your dislikes will become theirs a lot of the time. What I like and what I dislike will shape them and what they like or dislike a lot of times. Are you listening to me? It could be negative. It could be positive. Your attitude towards God, to the Word, to the church will shape them. It could be negative or it could be positive. Are you listening to me? How you treat God's word. How you treat the house of God. So disrespectful. People got trained in their, what they're seeing. They become disrespectful, prideful, arrogant. They become know-it-all. They become selfish. But we're to model Christ where none of these things are affecting their life. Amen? So the love of God lives inside of us. We can live this life and model Christ and be the best parent ever. Amen? You have to say this. What is it going to cost me to not take my position Seriously. What is it going to cost me? Because I look at my decisions and I say, what is it going to cost me not to do what is right? How is that going to affect my kids? Legacy is big in my heart. When, I, when I'm gone, man, I want my kids to say he was a man of integrity. He was a man that walked with God. He was a man that serious, was serious with the Lord. He was a man that quick, quick to say, a dad that was quick to say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Amen? He had my interest at heart. I want my kids to say that. Amen? So we want to be the very best parent, the very best father, the very best mother. And we can be. Stepmother, grandmother. All, we can be by the help of the Holy Spirit. It starts with you giving God the number one spot in your life personally. You have to move off of the throne and let God sit on the throne so you can be all that God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. Well, today we're going to dedicate... And I so commend the parents that are going to dedicate their children today. We don't, when we talk about child dedication, some people have this idea where you sprinkle them and you do all this. That's not even scriptural. We want to do things scriptural. And we have precedents set in the word of God where Hannah, and you see it First Samuel chapter 1, where Hannah cried out to God for a child. And Eli heard her and told her, it's going to happen. Basically prophesied over her. And then she had the child. After she had the child, she brought the child to the temple to dedicate the, the child, Samuel, which became a great prophet, dedicate Samuel to the Lord. And Samuel was raised in the temple by Eli the priest. Are you listening? She was serious about what she said to the Lord. And so she brought Samuel to the house of the Lord. She dedicated him to the Lord. In other words, she said, he's going to grow up to know God. Amen? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to pray over these kids, and I commend you for doing this. How many parents are going to have their kids dedicate today? One, two, three, four. Where's the other one? Five. I commend you for doing this. And the reason why I took the time to minister the Word of God is because this isn't something you take casual. This is something that I want to encourage you. It's a very serious responsibility and opportunity where you can raise champions for God, where your kids can fulfill the purpose of God. Well, they'll have a different view of things, a different perspective, and they'll walk out this life, and you can watch them, and the Bible says your kids are a reward from God. You're like, look at my kids. They didn't bow to the pressures. They didn't bow to what everybody else is doing. They stood strong. Amen? That's, what, that's a reward to you and I. Amen? So I commend you for doing that. We're going to call you up front here. I think the way we're going to do that 
we'll line you up and just social distance. Amen. So the parent and their child and the grandparents are here with you. I know some of the grandparents are here, but if you can just stay, remain seated, I guess it'd be okay. Is it okay? Some of the grandchildren. But have, bring your child up here and just stand right here. And um, we're going to pray over these children and pray over the parents. Amen. Amen. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to, to pour out the word of the Lord to you. Amen. You all came to witness your grandchild being dedicated. I so commend them for doing that. Thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. Darlene and Dudley. And uh, came from Luray today, Pastor Archie's. And, and I know he's probably going to watch this. Archie, I didn't have nothing to do with it, brother. He, they did it. I know. <laughs> They come from their own. Praise God. So listen, the parents, you can call them out, Abby. So we have, um, she's going to unmute this and you can come up here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have Jamie and Shane Coleman with their baby son, Colin Michael David Coleman. Where are we at? Is that the first one you have, Joel? Hmm? Oh, 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 ABC order, sorry. Jesse is going to bring sweet Arabella, Nicole Beatty. Then Jamie and Shane are going to bring Colin Michael David. She said to me one day, she said, watching on TV is good, but being in the house of the Lord is even better. Amen. Yes. So thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. Then we have Muriel and Joshua Mullins bringing Sloan Trinity Monroe Mullins. Then we have Jenny and Rick Richardson bringing little Jack Richard. And then we have Sierra and Jonathan Roof bringing little Alice Elaine. Praise the Lord. So they have come up, up here today in this service today to dedicate their baby. And what they're saying is, we want to commit to raising our children to know God. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to find Psalms 112. Put that up there, 1 through 4, in the Amplified Classic Translation. Because I'm going to speak this over each one of you. This is not something that we take lightly. God doesn't take it lightly. This is very serious in the eyes of God. Now, Meryl, we've raised her. <laughs> her dad and mom, I mean, she's been here for a long time. We so commend you for bringing your children. Amen. Every one of you. And Shane, praise God. Look at you. Praise God. Blessing, blessing from the Lord. So we thank God for you. We thank God for your commitment to the Lord of saying, God, I'm going to raise them to know you. And I commend you because that's the greatest thing you can do. I mean, there's a world out there trying to gain your children. Mm -hmm. There's a devil trying to gain your children. But you're saying, I'm going to raise him to know God. Yes, that's right. Amen. Here's what Psalm says in 112 verses 1 through, 1 through 4 in the Amplified Translation. It says, praise the Lord, hallelujah, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man and woman who fears, reveres, and worships the Lord yes. and delights greatly in his commandments. Verse 2, his offspring... His offspring shall be mighty. mighty. Say mighty. Ooh, mighty. Shall be mighty upon the earth. The mighty. generation of the upright shall be blessed. blessed. Prosperity and welfare are in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. We're talking about the man who walks with God. Yeah. Amen. A woman, a man, a woman who walks with God. That's right. This is what God is saying. Prosperity and welfare shall be in your house. Right. Light arises in the darkness for the upright. Gracious, compassionate, and just who are in right standing with God. In other words, and go ahead and read verse 5. Well, verse 4, light arises in dark. What does that mean? As you're raising your children, you're praying, and God gives you direction in their life, you're training them in their bent, in the way that God's calling them. Right. Bubby, when he's 8 years old, God called him and said, you're going to be a preacher. So what are we doing? We know that, so we're praying, and we're shaping him and aiming, aiming him towards that. Right. The, what God spoke to his life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're to do that. And as we do that, God gives us the wisdom. We don't have to, they don't have to raise, be raised and they don't know where they're going. Right. 
No, the Bible says light arises in the darkness That's for right. the upright. Amen. In other words, you can have the light, the wisdom of God in your life. You can know where God's taking them. Amen? Amen. Where God is leading them. And as a parent, God gives you the wisdom to yes. do that. Yes. And it's so wonderful Praise God. to see your children serving God. Amen? Amen. 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 So we can be the very best. Amen. Come on down here, Elvie. What do you got there? Certificates. Certificates here. Have to be pray with them. Yeah. Elvie's my secretary. We'll start here with little Jack. Hey, Jack is back. Amen. We're so thankful. So thankful. Praise God. You got their card here. Father, we thank you. Jack. I like that. Jack, you're back. Praise God. We thank God for this little child. We thank you, Lord God, for these parents. We commend them. We thank you, Lord, that blessings are attached to them raising little Jack to know you. And, Father, we thank you. We speak a blessing upon them. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessings that come from you, Lord God. Because, Lord, we thank you that you have a destiny for him to fulfill. You have great purpose for him. And, Father, we declare, Lord God, your protection on this family. We declare, Lord God, wisdom on this couple, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that they will, they will get to know you even better than ever before. And, Lord, they'll have the wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom, to raise Jack. Yes. To know you, to walk with you. To be the man that you called him to be. And, Lord, your hand will be haunting him in a very precious way, a very special way. And, Lord, even those around will see the significance of your hand upon his life. You, and Lord, I thank you that even as a young man, he'll be a voice for you and speak and declare the word of the Lord. And, Lord, I thank you that, Lord, he will grow to know you. He'll walk with you. And, Lord, he'll be even a prophet speaking the word of the Lord, prophesying the will of God in people's lives. So we declare that over him. We thank you, Lord. For this wonderful opportunity. So bless this couple with wisdom, strength, and ability. We thank you, Lord God, that Lord your hand is upon them. Yes. And thank you, Lord, we call them blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Your mom and dad came up from Florida, and they're here, right? Other family here amen. Well. Other family members, thank you all for coming today. Precious time. This is very, I call it sacred because it is sacred. Yes, it is. It's a very precious time. And I shared with you earlier that how God looks at it. He just, he just loves it when you take care of his children. Take it as a very serious responsibility. So I commend you in doing that. Appreciate you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I like to hug everybody, but I don't know. Y'all going to say it. Back off. All right. How do you pronounce that? Slow. You know, I get these names mixed up sometimes while she's here. So, Slow, listen, we thank you all. You know God. You know the voice of God. Amen. Christ has been modeled in front of both of you through your parents and come to church. And we so thank you for doing this. We commend you on this. Very precious. Not only in our sight, because we love it, but in God's sight. That's most precious. So I commend you for doing that. Father, we pray. We pray for this precious family. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that this family, Lord God, they're raising their children to know you. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your hand being upon them. We say wealth and prosperity shall be in their household because they revere you, walk with you. Light shall shine in the darkness. Lord God, they'll have wisdom and direction that comes from you. And Lord, they'll know. They'll know. They'll know from you how to train their children. They'll know from you how to model Christ. So, Father, I speak a blessing upon this couple. Lord, I thank you, and I declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. We declare that every assignment of the devil is broken. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you. We know the devil has an assignment on every one of us. But, Father, we declare a blessing upon this couple. We thank you, Lord, for your hand being upon them. The Lord God, they will be godly examples in front of their children. I commend them, and I know you commend them, Lord, in this wonderful time, sacred time, Lord God, where they're dedicating their little baby to you, saying, I want to raise my child to know you. My child has a purpose in life a godly purpose in life. Thank you. And so, Father, we thank you. Their steps will be directed by you. And thank you for little Sloan, Lord God. She'll be a worshiper yes. of the Lord Hallelujah. and a dancer before yes. the Lord. <laughs> and she'll worship the Lord with all of her heart. Oh, oh we thank God for the blessing that she is, not only to the parents and grandparents, but the blessing she is to the Lord. Yes. Amen. And as she grows, man, it's going to be such a blessing to see the hand of God on her life. Amen. We're so excited to see what God does. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you all. Thank you. We commend you. Amen. Jesse. Arabella and precious mother. 
We commend you for being here. Thank you so much. We got a little card for you, Arabella. I like that name, Arabella. So, Father, we thank you for this precious family right here, Lord. Thank you. Jesse and Arabella. Thank you, Lord God, for your hand being upon her and our daughter, Father. Lord, touch us my heart so tremendously. Lord God, to see your hand upon this young lady and her child, Father. And as they come, Lord God, to church, Lord God, consistently and faithfully because they want your hand on their life. I thank you, Lord God. I pronounce a blessing over them, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that you, Father God, would bless them. It would be a supernatural work. Your hand upon them would be so supernatural, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for the godly wisdom, the courage, the strength, Lord God, you give to this mother. Lord God, she'll raise her daughter to know you, Lord. And Lord, you'll give her, Lord God, the skillful and God, the wisdom she needs to raise her daughter to be a champion for you. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that Lord, you protect her. You watch over them. That Lord God, your hedge of protection is around them. And Lord, I thank you for removing even the negative influence, but surrounding with positive influence. And we declare, Lord God, they are blessed in Jesus' name. So thank you, Lord, for giving this mother, Lord God, all that she needs to be the mother that she could be praise in your Lord. eyes, in her daughter's eyes. Amen. And we give you thanks and give you praise. And I thank, I thank God for the calling Amen. on her life yes. and on your life. Yes. Every one of us have a calling. I thank God for the calling on your life. Mm-hmm. And I want you to start seeing things differently. Mm-hmm. I want you to start seeing yourself as somebody that can speak maybe an encouraging word to somebody. Yes. As you're raising your daughters, you can be an influence in other mothers' oh, lives. Yes. God will raise you up and you'll say, they'll say, how did you do that? Because I turned to God. Yeah. God is my, God is the one who gives me wisdom, gives me strength and the ability. Are you listening? So God will do that for you. Praise God. God is for such a time as this. Man, God is raising you up, young yes. lady. Amen. Yes. We love you. Appreciate you. We commend you. Father, thank you, Lord God, for your thank hand you upon God. her in a very thank special you. way. Thank you, Lord. And her precious daughter. Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Precious, precious. What you doing, Quinn? <laughs> I got her picture back in my office on my board there. Amen. I'm Colin Michael Davis. And Colin. Praise God. Colin, where you been, man? <laughs> Dude. Colin's here today, though, isn't he? Huh? We appreciate you all. Jamie and Shane and raising your children to know God. And little princess here. Man, she's making room for Colin. <laughs> Amen. So we thank you, Lord, for your hand upon this family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon this family. We thank you that their steps are directed by you. Lord, their hearts are open and sensitive to your voice. And, Lord, I thank you that your word is true. Psalms 112. Lord, I thank you that, Lord God, people will see their life and they'll see the blessings of God. And light shall arise in the darkness. Father, I thank you that, Lord, they'll know the path that you have for their children. And, Lord, I thank you that you'll turn on the light And, Father, give them the skillful and godly wisdom they need. And thank you, Lord, I pronounce a blessing on them that wealth and prosperity, spiritual wealth and prosperity shall be on this household. And, Father, we pronounce it upon them now in Jesus. That is your word. And, Father, we thank you that you, Lord, take this very seriously. And, Lord, blessings are attached to what they do with their children. So, Lord, we thank you that this family is committed today their children to you. They've committed today to raise their children to know you. Thank you, Lord, that every one of these parents will raise champions for God. Champions for God that will shine bright and be strong and courageous in this hour. Father, we thank you for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We should be getting some pictures here, man. <laughs> Dudley, appreciate you, brother. With Willie, wait, that's his Willie. That's his oh yeah. We'll get a picture of all y'all for y'all leave, okay? okay. Amen. Right, little Alice. Little Alice. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you all for coming today. <laughs> giving and us the opportunity. Of of How many of y'all come today to support them? Thank you all. I so commend you for coming today. Amen. And that was a very precious time. It's very, and it's a very wonderful opportunity that both of you have and to raise your daughter to know the Lord. And we so commend you. We commend you for coming today, giving us opportunity to pray over you. And uh, thank you for that. Father, we thank you for this family. We thank you for little Alice, your hand upon her. Thank you, Lord, for keeping her, protecting her, watching over her. Father, we know, Lord God, she has a great purpose in her life. Father, you have great things for her to accomplish. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that she'll grow up, Lord God, and she'll just blossom and bloom in the way that, Lord, you have for her, Lord God, to grow. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, those around will see your hand upon her in a very significant way. 
your hand will be upon this family, Lord God, as they choose to walk with you. you. Father, I thank you that you bless those yes. who look out for the children. Yes. And Father, I thank you for this couple, Lord. You'll give them skillful and godly wisdom. Thank you, that your hand will be upon them in a very special way. Yes. Father, I thank you. That, Lord, as they take a stand, and they say, Lord, I want my daughter to yes. know you. Praise I want my daughter to grow up to walk with you. Yes. Father, I thank you that, Lord God, you are doing a wonderful work in this couple, this family. And, Father, I thank you they'll be like a beacon on a hill, a light that shines bright. Lord, you have great things for all of us. And I thank you, Lord God, they'll step into and walk out the purpose and plan that you have for them as a family. And it's going to be precious, and it's going to be beautiful, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. You're going to look and say, what a wonderful thing, a reward from the Lord. So thank you. We commend you. We praise God for both of you. Praise God for his family. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Who's going to take a picture? Can we get a picture with them? Let me stand in front of be taller than this guy. <laughs> Short enough. Alice. Alice, you're going to look that way? Look here. Mm. Peek a boo. <laughs> we, lo we love the children. I said, Elvie, I just want two more. Just two more. God. Well, like I said, I just want two more. Let me just take her home with me. And get... <laughs> we got pictures of you all. Get... All right, let me stand up here so I can be taller than Shane. You're looking up to me now, son. And this is special. This is a very special time. Thank all of you for being here to witness this and to be be here. Little Jesse, can I have a picture with you all? Yeah, I'll stand for two so you say, I'm looking up to Pastor Carl. Can you get your picture? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you all. Thank you all. Praise God. Mariel, Josh. Let me stand for beside Josh. Is that all right, Josh? Oh, I'll take her, man. I'll take, <laughs> take them all. Stand back here between well, this couple here. Jack, I'll come I got your back. Thank you all so much. Let me say this, why those may be watching or those who are sitting here, we'll have another baby dedication. If you want your baby dedicated, they don't have to be like a baby baby. They can even be a teenager, still your baby. Amen. But if you want to dedicate your children to the Lord, we would love to have the opportunity to pray over them, to bless them, speak the word over them. And uh, it's just something special about that. So if you want to do that, if you're watching online, you don't have a church family, we want to encourage you to get into a good church. And uh, get fed the word of God and raise your children to know God, and it'd be such a great reward for you. Amen. Go ahead, Alfie. Aren't you glad you didn't miss church today? That's so special, and we just so enjoy doing that. Praise God. Well, we're going to let you go in just a minute. Uh, before, we, before we do, we want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in your giving today. You know, we've been learning about raising champion children, and one of the great things we can model is to be unselfish in the area of our finances. You know, you see selfishness is automatic in the life of a child. They want to, everything is theirs. Isn't that their famous word? Mine. Mine. That's mine. Uh, and so we have to teach and model and train them how to share and how to be generous. And so uh, I love a scripture here uh, that I want to encourage you. And as you prepare your heart to worship the Lord in giving today, 
And it's found in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 32. Uh, Pastor Nancy Dufresne recently wrote a new book on, on love. We have it in our bookstore, The Great Quest. And she shared this scripture, and it's so ministered to me. Romans 8, 30, um, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 32 says that God did not spare his own son, but he delivered him up for us all. In other words, God took the most precious thing in the whole world to him was his son. And he gave his son for us all. You know, we just saw the floods take place and the, the storm take place in Louisiana and Texas, Mississippi. And when they would interview people, they would say, well, I've lost everything, but I have my family. In other words, people, relationships are the highest, the top in our lives. We can lose things in the natural, but our relationships, people are of the greatest value. Well, that's how God sees it. His greatest thing was the life of his son. And he gave his son for us all. And keep reading. It says, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things that means God has already given us the greatest his son and now he's also along with Christ is going to give us all things what is that what do you need peace wisdom joy healing strength victory he gives you all things along with Christ so my goodness we've got it all say I've got it all Praise the Lord. So because of that, because we're blessed, abundantly supplied for, then we can give back to God. And that's what we're giving you an opportunity to worship God in your giving today because he's provided so much for us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So the ushers are going to come down. If you need an envelope for your giving, just raise your hand. You can give through cash or through check, um, through an envelope. Um, if you prefer to give digitally, you can download the Dynamic Life app. Just go to your app store. You can download the app and text give. Or you can go to our website, and there's an option to give there. And then last, if you prefer, just stop by the bookstore and give with your credit card. They can uh, receive your tithe and offering in the bookstore. But we just want to thank you for your, your faithful support, for your generous giving and giving cheerfully because we act just like our father when we give cheerfully don't we amen, amen. well the ushers are going to come up and down the aisle and they'll uh, they'll bring the bucket by if you want to drop that in we're going to worship the lord and then when they finish with that then um, they're going to dismiss you from the back to the front of the sanctuary dismissing by rose so if you would just wait till they dismiss you amen you ready to give joyfully Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord as we give. Now they're going to sing a song and if you want to hang out while they're singing you know, you can continue sitting in your seat. The ushers give you the opportunity to, to, to leave when you're row leaving. But if you want to sit here and just enjoy the song, that's up to you. Praise God. Thank you all for coming today. Bless you. 